Hello everyone and welcome to episode 15 of our Raspberry Pi series and in today's episode we're going to be installing NZB Get on your Raspberry Pi. Over the next few episodes we are going to be looking at Usenet and we're going to be looking at services that work with Usenet to name a few, Sonar, Radar and um, LIDAR and these we're going to install these on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, specifically today we're just going to be downloading the um, download client uh, NZB Get and installing that on the Raspberry Pi. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started today, um, we do not condone piracy in any shape or form. Um, we are just showing you this for educational purposes. This is basically part of our Raspberry Pi series and we just want to show off what the Raspberry Pi can do. And we feel that this is quite an important part of it and it basically shows off how automation can work and how you can get things to work in conjunction with other things. So this is we're not really interested in the piracy aspect of this and we ask that you respect the laws in your country and obviously if you do download anything from Usenet that you have the correct license to do so. So before we get installed in NZB Get, I just wanted to lay the groundwork for the next couple of episodes um, and just explain how Usenet works, just to give you a sort of base idea. So we are today going to be installing NZB Get, which is an application on our Raspberry Pi. Radar is an application too, as well as LIDAR and Sonar. Radar is for movies, LIDAR is for music, and Sonar is for TV series, okay? And they all work with a web interface that you can interact with across the network. Um, so what happens is, is we are going to install NZB Get today, and it's going to be this is basically a download client that is going to have access to Usenet, and it's going to be able to download files directly from there. Okay, so looking at this map, Usenet and these private servers, you need to have a paid subscription to get into these um, services, and it's using a news group where you can access the files and download them from the Usenet servers. Now. Usenet works different to BitTorrent. Okay, BitTorrent is a peer-to-peer -peer network, so it works from sharing a file from one person to the other, and it's free. You don't really pay for much BitTorrent unless you use a private tracker or something like that, but um, using BitTorrent as it is out the box is free. You will need to find a Usenet provider, and you can find them online. Um, I personally use news hosting. I have no affiliate with them, so that's just my choice. Um, sometimes um, different providers have different backbones, um, which means that they have different uh, servers that they use, different private servers, so they might have access to some content that another provider won't. So you could benefit if you're looking for um, some pretty rare content maybe, or you know some pro maybe old content, you might wanna use a couple of different um, Usenet providers. Now, what also you're gonna need is what's known as an indexer, okay? An indexer works a little bit like um, a bit like a search engine, so a bit like Google does. So Google will go out on the internet, it crawls the internet, and it picks up websites and it indexes them. So it basically, when you put in a search and you say, I want to look for cars, it will show you a list of the car websites that they've crawled. Now, the same can be said for um, the Usenet indexer. Okay, these are all separate websites. That, again, you'll have to try and find some providers. I'm not going to list them today. Um, you will need to do that research yourself. Um, but the indexes that you use, they just know and have indexed the Usenet private servers. Okay, so they, when you search in radar or lidar or sonar and you search for a movie, for instance, it will go to the indexer and it will say, do you know if this file exists? This file, they'll go across to the Usenet service, which they've indexed already, and they will say, yes, we have these versions of this file. So it will also pull up um, different versions of the same file. So for a movie, for instance, it will have, you know, like 1080p, 4K, you know, depending on what you've set inside the radar application. You can actually set the size of the file that you want to download. Um, so if you've got limited space on your hard drive or you just want to stick to a certain size, you can. Um, and also if you don't want to have 4K, you know, 4K takes up a lot of room, so maybe you just want 1080p, um, you can set that in radar. So you can set the file and um, format and you can also set the um, size of the file that is downloading. Now you know roughly how all the parts work together. I'm going to show you a typical search. So in Radar, I search for a film. It's going to look on the indexer. Do you have this film? Based on the criteria that we've set in Radar, it will then pull back a list of all the different files that it has. Okay. So following the criteria it has, okay, it will select automatically select the file that fits your criteria. Okay. It will then send that link that NZB file okay across to your NZB get downloader and because your NZB get downloader is configured with your Usenet provider it will then go up through the um, Usenet provider it will grab the file it will download it to NZB get okay it will then unpack it because basically Usenet works in packets so um, a, a file will be broke up into several different compressed packets and then it will put it basically it'll unpack it on NZB get and put it all together it will then 
based on the criteria of what's set in Radar, it will then inform through the API to Radar, and Radar will rename the um, the, f the file name that you set in Radar, because you can also set what file name you want and how you want that um, name convention to look, okay? So, and then set on your criteria again in these applications, it will then rename that file and then move it to a folder that you set. So if you had a Plex folder, for instance, it will automatically move that to the Plex folder. Your movie will then appear on your Plex system so you can then access it and watch that film. So that's the process of Usenet. That's how it works. Um, if you guys are ready now, I want to show you how to install our very first part, which is NZB Get, and show you how to, we're going to configure that too and show you how to get that to work with the Usenet providers. Okay, so this is NZB Get. It is open source and it is cross-platform. It works across... Um, every operating system that I can think of, I think it's even got a Android client, so it can be used on there. Um, this is how it looks. So once we've got it installed, this is how the interface is going to look. So we can access that over the network too. So the image we're going to be using today is the Hotio NZB Get image. Um, the reason why we're not using linuxserver.io is because we're still having problems with the packaging on there. There is still something that needs to be updated in Raspberry Pi OS. Um, I have tried to patch it in several ways. Um, and I just I just think it's best not to use it just for the time being until it comes down in the official Raspberry Pi OS updates. And um, so basically, I like this Hotio image. It works. I've tested it. It's had 10 million pulls from um, Docker Hub, and it's also been updated 12 hours ago. So it ticks two of our criteria. So this is a um, good package to use. So we're going to go to Portainer today, and we're going to come down to Stacks, and we're going to go to Add a Stack, and we're going to name it NZB get now i have created a stack for today a docker compose stack which you will find in the description below under the resources section um that will give you a link to our blog post and if you go to our blog post dedicated blog post for today's episode you can copy and paste this um, stack from our website so we're going to copy and paste it from here and we're going to paste it into the web editor now what we're going to do as normal, we're going to need to edit a couple of these fields. Um, the file paths we're going to need to set up. And we're also going to need to check that you guys have the correct PUID and PGID. So we're going to need to minimize this now and come into our terminal window. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see what we're doing. Okie doke. And we're going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi using SSH TAC P for the port, which is 1984, and our username, which is user1, and then our Raspberry Pi IP address. Okay, so we put our password in, and we're going to clear that out. So you guys are going to need an app data folder installed on your Raspberry Pi and a downloads folder. So if you guys haven't got that, you can create that as we go along. So we've already done this in previous episodes. If you guys go back and watch them, you'll learn how to do this. Um, so we're just going to navigate now to our updater folder, which is on SRV, DEV, and then our long wacky name for our blue drive, and then updater folder. And we're just going to clear this out now. Now we're going to list out the contents of this folder, which has all our previous containers in. And we're going to make a directory here called nzbget. And then we're going to go into that folder now. And we're going to clear this out again. And we're going to create a config folder in here. Uh, make directory and then config and then we're going to cd into our config folder and then what we could do is pwd now to print the working directory which will give us the absolute path that we can use in our stack file so this is for the um, docker app uh, this sorry this is for the app data nzb get config file so we're going to come into our stack file now and just where this file path is here we're going to copy this left side and we're going to paste our absolute path into here. Okay, so now we've pasted that into there. We're going to get the file path to our downloads folder. So we're going to come back a few levels here. Uh, one more. So we've gone up a few levels in the file file directory path. And we're going to ls here. And we have a downloads folder there. So we're going to go into it. And we've got nothing in there at the minute. We're going to go print work in directory. And we're just going to copy this absolute path from here. And we're going to go back into our stack file. And we're going to copy, we're going to paste our file location there. Okay, so that's what yours should look like with your locations. 
And you guys need to check what your PUID and your PGID is. And you can do that by doing that with your username ID and then putting your username in. And it should tell you. So the UID is 1001 and the GID is 100. Okay. So you need to replace these two fields here, the UID and GID, with ones that are, you've just found out on your terminal. Okay. So now that's done, we're going to copy and paste this whole stack into our text editor here into our web editor okay so now we've pasted that in here we don't need to do anything else we're just going to click on deploy the stack and there you go it's gone through so we're going to go back to our containers and make sure that everything's okay and as you can see there it's running so what we're going to do is this is running on port six six seven eight nine so we're going to go to our Raspberry Pi 192 and we're going to go 6789. So we're going to need to put in the default username and password. And then the password, which you can see below here. And we're going to click save for the minute. That's fine. And there you are. We now have NZB get installed and ready to be configured. So what you guys are going to need is a Usenet provider. As I said, I use news hosting who are very stable. They offer some deals. I mean, if you, you guys probably don't want to pay full price, you could probably look for a deal or, you know, or si sign up with them and they might send you a deal down the line. But the full prices, you can get this a lot cheaper than what they charge per month. So um, it's worth keeping an eye out for that. But um, yeah, so that's what news hosting offers. Okay, as I said, I've got no affiliation with this company. What you choose to use is your choice. Um, they've got good retention and things like that and unlimited speeds and downloads. So um, if you guys sign up with an account and then pay your monthly fee, you'll get an email which will have your um, details that you can use within the NZB Get clients. Now we've signed up for our Usenet provider, we are going to log into the Usenet provider's account and we're going to get the details from here. Okay, so the things we're going to be needing are the server address, the SSL port because it uses encryption um, between you and the Usenet server. So anyone who is in between there like an ISP etc can't see what you're downloading just gives you a level of privacy we're also going to need to know the number of connections that you've got on your account and the days of retention as well as your username and password so now you go back into NZB get and go to settings and go to new servers and we're going to name this so it's going to be news hosting and you can name that anything you want just something that you recognize and um, we're going to scroll down here to where it says host and we're going to grab the host name And we're going to paste that in. Um, we're going to use the port number, which was 553, I believe. No, 563. And then we're going to use our username. And then our password. And then we're going to click on encryption here. And then the number of connections, okay, so we're going to look here, number of connections is 60, I would set that to 59, so that you don't overrun. Okay, and you don't want to be using the full amount, uh, so just put it a little bit under, whatever you're comfortable with. And under retention, we've got 4606, and we can slide that in there as well, okay. So now you've done all that, what we're going to do is we're going to test the server by clicking on the bottom there, test connection. And then you should get connection successful. If you do, that means that your NZB get client now is ready to communicate with the Usenet service. So the very last thing you've got to do is click on save all changes. And there you go. And then click reload NZB get. So the final thing we're going to do here is we're going to go into settings and we're going to go to categories. And we're just going to add a category here. And we're going to call it TV. So we are creating that TV category for when we install Sonar on our Raspberry Pi, which will be in a later episode. So we're just going to click Save All Changes now, and then Reload NZB Get again. Okay, so any changes you make, you need to reload it. So this now is your client that's fully set up. This is now ready to be used. Um, it's ready to be used in conjunction with the other um, services we're going to install, Sonar, Radar, and LIDAR. 
So we've come to the end of our episode today. Uh, as we said, this is the first part of uh, you know several different um, applications that's going to work with Usenet, Sonar, Radar, LIDAR to come down the line. We also are going to show you how to use an Android app that can control all of them from your mobile device. So you can have um, you know instantly download whatever you want to at a touch of a button, um, which is going to be great. So if you guys are interested in any of that and you've got benefit out of today's episode, please hit that like button and the subscribe button and tick the notification bell so you will be notified of any of our new content as soon as we upload it. In the description below, we use affiliate links. These are Amazon affiliate links. We've gone out there and sourced the best products that we can find that are compatible with our Raspberry Pi series. They don't cost you any extra to use them links. All they do is they give us a little bit of commission back. And you guys have been using them links and we really do appreciate it. We've also reached a new milestone of 200 plus subscribers. I just want to thank every single one of you for subscribing to our channel. Um, we really do appreciate the support. So this brings me to the end of today's episode. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Now.